I am so happy to be here this evening with Amber Marshall, um, the star, really, um, of Heartland. So 250 episodes, 17 seasons. Looking back on when you got that call that so many years ago, could you ever even imagine being here tonight? Not in 17 years. <laughs> it was honestly something that I was so grateful for when I did get the call because I was a horse girl myself. I love the story. I was like, how fun would that be to be able to do a role where my two passions come together, acting and horses, and then to imagine that it was going to go on for almost two decades, could be two decades, we're still going hopefully. Yes. Um, so it's it's just one of those things that I don't think any actor ever even dreams of when they get a role, that it could go on more than two or three years. And to be here 17 years later is pretty remarkable and, and really special for me. Yeah, it, it is uh, 100%. And I mean, this is a show set in a rural Southern Alberta community, and yet it is popular around the world. What do you think it is that resonates with people across the globe so deeply? I think first and foremost, it's that connection with family, with animals, with just being comfortable out in the environment too. And there's not a lot of opportunities for shows like that these days. You know, there was a lot of really heavy city-based drama that puts you on the edge of your seat. And, you know, maybe you had to stay up an extra hour before you go to bed because you're we were just all like reeling from watching it. And I think Heartland is sitting down with your family, being able to watch content that you know is going to be safe for the whole family. There's not going to be any questions that arise. And it just makes you feel good. After you watch an episode of Heartland, yeah, you might have cried a little and you may laugh and all the things in between. But I think at the end of the day, when you finish an episode, you just feel good inside. Yeah, I agree, right? It, it might bring you through an emotional roller coaster, but you'll end up in a good place. Eh? Um, so I know that you can't reveal too much, but what can you say about this upcoming season for the fans? This season's really special for me because I think it's an opportunity for my character to start living her life again. You know, she's been trapped for a few years really trying to learn how to move on from the death of her husband and to be a good mom and to be there. And this season, she allows herself to branch out a little bit and, and live her life. And, and maybe we get to see Amy in ways that we haven't seen her before. Because when the show began, Amy was a teenager and she fell in love with the boy in the loft. And they went through a, a roller coaster for sure, but they were ultimately together for those core seasons of the show. So now to be able to see her kind of wondering what love could be like again, I I think it's really important and it was a really fun season for me. Amazing. I can't wait to see how this season goes. Enjoy your night. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with Michelle Morgan who plays Lou on Heartland. Um, 250 episodes. How does it feel to be here this many years later? Um, it's hard to wrap your head around such a big number. So what really impresses me and, and makes me happy is that we continue to really care so much about every episode. We put so much love and work and um, energy into every single episode, even 250 episodes later. So that's, I think that's a pretty big deal. So your character, Lou, has been through a lot in, in the first 16 seasons. Um, it's looking like perhaps things are starting to settle down a little bit. Is this an accurate view of season 17 or what should we be expecting for Lou? No, things don't settle down. Um, this is actually a season where Lou goes on a real ride. She goes on a journey. It's almost like a midlife crisis. And um, I think it's very relatable for women my age in their late 30s, early 40s. She's going through a bit of a time right now. Look, this is a show set on a ranch yeah. in southern Alberta, but yet it's one of the most popular shows across the world. How do you think such what seems on the surface to be a niche kind of uh, genre, how has that captured audiences across the globe? Good question. And, you know, I think a lot of TV production companies wish they had that answer because um, our show really captured lightning in a bottle. I think uh, it's everything from the dynamics between the different actors on our show works really well. The writing, um, the animal element, all the horses people love. and But also a big deal is the foothills of Alberta. People love to tune in and see that. 
Amazing. I can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks so much for chatting with me. Nice to chat with you. All right, so I am standing here with Chris Potter on the red carpet before the premiere of the 250th episode of Heartland. When you first got that call that you uh, were going to be playing Tim in this show, did you have any idea that it could be like this? Well, the short answer would be no, based on the fact that we've been here for 17 years. But I could say that at that stage of my life and experience, um, that first script came down the pipe when the writer's strike was on in 2007. And a lot of us that were working in the U.S. were now starting to get calls from Canadian productions. I read the script, and I have four children, and I had watched pretty much everything uh, at that point. Because the kids, and the only thing I didn't fall asleep to at the time was SpongeBob. <laughs> um, when I read the script, I thought, this has, this has legs. I mean, if they can do this the way that this reads, this could last. I thought to myself, this could last five years. I had no idea. But I believed in it from the beginning um, as far as my instincts went. So it was, it was sort of a slam dunk for me to get involved in it. And um, it's been challenging over the years because I, I live in Ontario, so I commute. And um, I'm not a local. And so that's been a lot of air flights and a lot of time spent. I love Calgary. I absolutely love it. Can't recommend Calgary enough as a destination or a place to live. The crew, the film crews are exceptional, top notch, as you can tell by the, the some of the films like Revenant, yeah. uh, Fargo being done here. These are all the same people that have worked on Heartland. And um, you know the weather out here, we're outside a lot. So uh, I haven't seen a flood or a tornado or a hailstorm take us down. Even the pandemic didn't stop us. So I'm pretty proud of, of Alberta and I'm proud to be a part of this. Yeah, amazing. Um, not only has this show been successful in Calgary, in Alberta, in Canada, it's really become kind of a global phenomenon. Um, what do you think it is about this show set on a rural ranch in southern Alberta that resonates with so many people? Well, I, I think that's attributed to the writing and mostly the leadership uh, of the showrunner. Initially, it was uh, Heather Conkey, um, and now our showrunner is Mark Haroon, who was a writer from the very beginning. But the one thing that they were able to maintain was the tone of the show, and they never really deviated from it. And I'll tell you a little story. Um, I said to Heather, we had a publicist early on that said to me, well, boy, our ratings are great. We were sold in 120 countries. And he was very, very proud of the success. And I said, well, he said, I said, if we're that successful, the U.S. will copy the show. And I said, Treat Williams will be the grandfather at the time. This yeah, was a long yeah. time ago. Uh, Treat Williams, rest in peace, amazing actor. Uh, so Heather overheard that conversation. She said to me, well, the only difference is that Amy and Ty would be in bed in the third episode. It took eight years yeah. for our slow burn. So what I'm getting at is I think it fills a, a certain family void. Um, it's multi-generational. That's appealing. And uh, the storyline is, is drawn out, but, but stays consistent. So it, it attracts a certain demographic, and clearly there's a big demographic for a comfort show like this. Other than that, you know, I can't say. Uh, it's a, it, in this industry, it's a combination of things that can create success. And you can have all, all of the right elements, you think, and the things don't work, and sometimes, once in a while, you can't explain why they do. Yeah. Well, regardless of why, it has certainly worked out. Um, I know that you can't say too much, but we're here for the premiere of season 17. What should we be expecting going into this uh, new I, season? I have no idea. I directed episode uh, uh, three and four this year, so I know all about those two. Um, I know what I did in episodes one and two, but I haven't seen anything. 
And so as far as what to expect, I can tell you that the look this year should be phenomenal because we have a new director of photography. Um, and that, that alone, I think I'm looking forward to just seeing the change, knowing how good Damon Moreau is. He was our A camera operator for many years. He's a multi-talented guy. And um, I'm excited just to see it on, the, on a bigger screen. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, amazing. I, I can't wait to see it as well. I hope that you enjoy this night, soak it in, and uh, uh, thanks for chatting with me. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice okay. to meet you as well. Okay.